Hey there, Carrie Rhodes here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and my craft studio here in Eagle, Idaho. I am showing you today how to create a DIY frame for your slimline cards. I wanted to make a shaker card with a slimline card so bad, and I could not get my hands on any slimline dies. Like, they're all backordered. So I decided to take matters into my own hands and make a frame myself using stuff that I had on hand, and you probably do too. So I'm going to show you two different ways you can make this frame so you can start making slimline shaker cards. All right, let's get started. My slimline card measures nine inches by four inches, and so does this panel that I'm gonna cut the frame from. You wanna use a paper cutter that has a ruler on the cutting arm and a blade with arrows coming out the side. You're gonna take your nine inch by four inch paper and put it on the nine inch side at the three and a half inch mark on your cutter. Then put your blade at the one half inch mark on the cutting arm and cut it from a half of an inch to eight and a half inches. Then you're gonna rotate that on the four inch side, put it in at eight and a half inches, put your blade in at a half inch and cut down to three and a half inches. And you're gonna repeat that on the other side. So I'm putting my blade in the paper at a half of an inch and cutting to eight and a half inches. And then on the last side, again, I'm gonna put the blade in at half of an inch and cut down to three and a half inches using the ruler on that cutting arm. And that leaves me with a frame, just like that. Okay, now let's move on to the second way you can do this, and that is if you have a rectangle die set the, where the rectangles are long. I'll put a link to this die set for you below if you're interested. I'm gonna cut this with the partial die cutting method. So I'm lining up the die where I want it on my paper, but when I bring this to my die cutting machine, I'm going to place the top plate so that it does not cut against that bottom line. I'll run it through just like this with the top plate offset. Then when I remove the die, you'll see it only cut on three sides. And if it cuts on four, it's not that big of a deal. You can still get your long rectangle. I'm gonna repeat this process of partial die cutting, this time having it not cut the line at the top. When I bring that back in, you'll see that I have a nice rectangle frame and excess paper from the center I can use for something else. So those are two different ways to cut out your frames for a nine by four inch slimline card. All right, let's move on to the card making. I'm bringing in the Peekaboo Pals stamp set for today's card. I love these critters. And I'm gonna use every single critter from this stamp set. So I'm using my Misty to go ahead and stamp those out with some Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink, which happens to be my preferred ink for Copic coloring. Here you can see all the images and their paws. And I'm going to be doing shades of gray, and I'm using neutral gray, and also shades of brown on all of these animals. So I'm gonna show you the coloring for this one right here, the panda, and then also the bunny. I like to start with my lightest color, and then I bring in my darkest color. I blend that out with my medium shade, and then one more blend with my lightest shade. And I have found, for me, that's the easiest way to color. Um, because a lot of the images I color are small areas like this, I might do it a little bit differently if I was coloring a large area. All right, so I'm just doing a little bit of shading here with my N2 marker and then the color. And that will finish up the panda. I will repeat the same coloring process for his little paws. And for the bunny, I'm using some E markers and doing the same exact method where I'm starting with my lightest just to put down a layer of color so that it makes the blending process a little bit easier. And then I can come in with my darkest, blend that out with my medium shade. So here's the darkest, here's the medium, and then I'll do my final blend with that lightest color. I'm trying to leave a little bit of a highlight in the center of his ears. And I will eventually come back with the colorless blender on this guy too. Yeah, right there. Lighten up his face and his ears a little bit. Here are all the markers I use to color these images. You can freeze it here if you wanna see the exact colors. I'm die cutting all of these out with the coordinating dies and there they are. 
Aren't they cute? All right, so these are gonna get adhered to this frame. Now, if you're wondering why I'm doing all seven of the critters, there I have some double stick tape across the bottom of that frame. It's because this card is going to a friend of mine um, and her family. So they have five boys. So there's a total of seven people in their family and there are seven critters in the stamp set. And this family is uh, very dear to me. We're very close and they know that my favorite singer is Toby Mac. He was here in concert and when they found out, they knew that I needed to go and bought me tickets and the boys even pitched in some of their own money to help pay for it. So this is my special thank you card to them because it was an unbelievable experience. I loved it so much. So that's why um, I do this, you know, to make special things for people um, so that they know that they're special to me. And just the... Um, uh, the creative outlet that it brings me and helps fill my cup so I can keep doing all the other things that I do in my life, you know, dishes and laundry and taking care of the kids and errands and all those things. But I have my crafty time that helps refuel me and keep me going. All right, so there we have all the critters and all their little paws, and I think they're adorable. So I'm going to line the back of this frame with my double stick tape and then I am going to put a little bit of liquid glue on the back of the critters because remember, I am creating a shaker card. So I'm going to adhere my window sheet to the back of this and I want it to stick to those critters too. And this Tombow two-way glue works really well um, to adhere to a window sheet. So you can go ahead and use that. So there we have it, the beginning of my shaker card. Next, I'm going to stamp out the sentiment all of the sentiments, I have three different pieces I'm using to make one sentiment. All of these come from the same Avery L stamp set, the Peekaboo Pals. So I'm stamping it with clear ink and then embossing it with white powder. And it says, I just had to say, you're the best, thank you. So I left a little space um, there between you are the best and thank you. And I will go back in later with um, my gel pen and put kind of the the little dot 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 between and finish that sentiment up so I'm going to stick that down to the window sheet and it will go edge to edge on the inside of that frame just like that all right so there are three different sizes of stars and three different size hearts in this stamp and die set. So I'm die cutting all of those from some glittered cardstock and I'm gonna put them on my background. Speaking of my background, I forgot or meant to and didn't push record when making this ink blended background. I used some Distress Oxide inks as well as water, the shimmer spray from Avery L and the um, Distress Oxide to splatter the front of it. So there you have the background on my nine by four card. And I'm just bringing back in my window panel as I decide where to place these and make sure that they're gonna show up. I don't mind if they're a little bit behind the sentiment strip, but I thought it would be really fun to have some elements on the card that stayed in place even though the rest of the things on the inside are gonna be moving around the shaker elements, it would be cool to have some that just stayed in place. So that's what these are there for. And they're really cute little shapes, even if you're not stamping out the images first and just using them as die cuts. Love it. All right, Avery L has a cloud wall um, frame die set. And so I just said, there it is. I decided to add some clouds to the front of this card and so I'm putting those on here now and I will refer back to my card panel just to make sure I'm not covering up those hearts and stars too much and I did do some adjusting to make sure it all fit and they're really good. The glue was still a little bit wet so I could do some maneuvering. All right so we'll arrange those clouds. I'm going to put five of them on. Some will be hanging off and so it was okay with me that I only die cut this from a scrap of paper. And so I only got some partial clouds. I didn't want a bunch of full ones. I only needed one that wasn't cut off on the edge. So it worked out great. 
cute. So one more tiny little cloud there on the side and that will complete the card front part of this card. And then I just need to outline the whole frame with some foam tape. So that's what I did here. And then rub the inside with some anti-static so that it will not stick, the uh, confetti pieces will not stick to the edge of that tape. And then I also did my card just in case. I really wanted things to flow around smoothly. So I decided it was gonna be best to put my sequins and my confetti and my glitter that I mixed together inside of the frame and then back that with the card. I'm, it was very scary to me that I might not line this up right, but I took a chance and it actually worked out really good. So just remove the backing on the foam tape very carefully so that the confetti doesn't jump up and stick to your foam tape. Do slow and steady for that. And then here I am just taking my time so I can really see what I'm doing and make sure I get my card on there nice and straight. And it worked. Ah, so glad, so glad. So there you can see the shakers moving around and there is glitter in there and over time the inside of that will become a little bit less staticky so that the glitter doesn't stick to the window sheet. I decided to take those same hearts and stars but from the stamp set to stamp a little bit on the inside to mimic what was going on on the outside of the card. And then I thought I would stamp the little bear from the polar peekaboo pals on the inside and just color that as kind of a grizzly bear so that there would be another critter on the inside that would be me. So I'm the little bear and I was thinking when they get this card they're immediately going to try to figure out which critter is which person in the family and that's exactly what happened and it made me so happy to hear them doing that because I, I gave the card to them in person. Um, one of the boys in the family is my daughter's best friend and so he is the one who opened it when they were over here for homeschool day. We do um, homeschool together every Thursday so it's super fun. That finishes up the card. So if you liked this video or you learned something new, please let me know by giving this video a thumbs up. And of course, I would love to hear from you. I love to chat with my fellow card makers. You could go ahead and leave me a comment below. And if you're new here, you might wanna subscribe. I have new videos every week. And I will be back on Tuesday with my new Stamp Set of the Month series for the month of March. So be sure to come back and check that out on Tuesday. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I appreciate you so much and happy stamping. Bye!